please welcome Dr. Danny Boyd. You know, uh, my mom lives back home in Ireland, and when I call her and describe a winter's day in Nova Scotia, she often says things like, Jesus, Danny, can you not do your research somewhere else? <laughs> and uh, honestly, I suppose I could, but I love Nova Scotia, and I want to be part of the story that builds our regional capacity for globally impactful breakthroughs in medical research. And to be honest, I fancy myself as a bit of an underdog. I like it when the expectation is that I'm probably gonna fail. Suits me just fine, because that allows me to focus on execution. Now let's be fair, if you wanna tackle some of the biggest challenges in oral health, or you wanna tackle some of the biggest challenges in cancer care, or you want to tackle some of the biggest challenges in pain management, you kinda got to accept that that's not gonna be easy, no matter where you are on the planet. You got to accept that sometimes it's gonna fail, no matter where you are on the planet. And so my idea for you this evening is simple. Halifax is as good a place as any to start a global healthcare revolution, and I wanna convince you of it. Every year, 800,000 people get diagnosed with liver cancer. 92% of those patients don't see their seventh month. It's a horrendous condition. To address this issue, there is an absolute global need right now, right now, to deliver tiny microsphere technologies. Think glass marbles half the size of a human hair. These marbles are intended to be injected into a tumor to block blood flow or to release radiation or to release cancer, or excuse me, to release chemotherapy from right inside the cancer itself, targeting only the cancer cells. The catch is, if you want to do that type of advanced technology and that type of advanced treatment, you've got to be able to see these tiny little microspheres on an x-ray. And that is way easier said than done. Many have tried, many have failed, because the development of an imageable microsphere that you can see on x-ray for cancer care is fraught with immense technical and regulatory challenges. That said, if you could develop one, then you change the world of cancer care treatment for patients with liver cancer. By making one of these microspheres imageable, you allow doctors to do something they've never been able to do before. Standardize, personalize, and optimize these embolic procedures on a patient-to-patient -patient basis for hundreds of thousands of patients around the world every year. To cut a long story short, we built it. We built it, and this is, this is a completely, you don't gotta be a PhD in material science to see that you can see these little things. We built a completely unique, one of a kind, visible microsphere, and we built layers of IP protection around it to protect that intellectual property. But the moment we seen this for the first time, we absolutely knew we had a responsibility to get this technology to patients, period. So we founded a company. We founded a company called ABK Biomedical, Dr. Bob Abraham, Dr. Sharon Kehoe, and myself, the A, the B, and the K. And we entered an innovation competition. And we were judged by international experts in everything from investment banking to innovation to medical device design to economic development, whatever you like, right? We were judged by them. The point is, we won. And everybody agreed that this technology was game-changing globally. This Nova Scotian innovation was game-changing. And then we got this. Then we got, like... I call it a counteroffer, which was garbage, right? But the counteroffer was, ah, you're never gonna get this to patients in Nova Scotia. If you wanna do this, you're gonna need to raise like 30 or 40 million dollars. This, this is not something you're gonna be able to do in Nova Scotia. 
I was personally told to get the hell out of here. I was personally told to go to Toronto, go back to Europe, go to the US, go anywhere, because you won't get it done here. I was told we wouldn't find the executive management here. I was told that Nova Scotia can't build radioactive medical devices that can change the world. I could go on forever. The point is, well, the point is that the naysayers that said we couldn't do it, they were plain old-fashioned wrong, period. Our, our innovation was strong enough to beat all of those headwinds. And I'm not pretending it was easy because by God it wasn't, right? But with the help of ACOA and partners in this region and around the world, ABK built a world-class executive team like you couldn't get anywhere on the planet. We built a world-class facility, a one of its kind, not in Canada, not in North America, on the planet to build this technology. We built that facility and the naysayers that said, nah, you're never gonna raise the money, screw them, because we did. That's 30 million US, at the time it was 40 million Canadian. That was just three years ago. We built the company, we built the technology, and today, ABK Biomedical, little old Halifax startup, is partnered with some of the world's largest oncology centers on the planet, centers like the MD Anderson Cancer Center, and with its team of experts, ABK, is now, I am so proud to say, treating patients in New Zealand for the first time, and it happened three weeks ago. It's absolutely awesome. So for me, don't tell me Nova Scotia can't impact global health. We're doing it already. And it's the strength of our innovations that can beat those toughest headwinds. But let's change things up for a second. Let's go from breakthroughs in cancer care to breakthroughs in oral care. Oops, how do I go back here? Here we go. So imagine trying to enter the globally competitive toothpaste market out of Halifax. You can laugh out loud at that one for sure, right? <clears throat> imagine trying to take on the titans of the toothpaste industry. Colgate, GSK, the Sensodynes of the world, Procter & Gamble. Now that is some serious headwinds right? Those companies defend a $30 billion market every year with ferocity like you couldn't believe. It's unbelievable, right? That said, I like being the underdog, and in 2018, I was asked to lead a continuing dental education course entitled, What's in My Toothpaste? And the theme on the day was, What's in My Sensitivity Toothpaste? So imagine it. I'm in a room full of oral health professionals, we're engaged in this deep technical assessment of all active ingredients used to treat sensitivity. And that day, it became really clear to all of us that the innovation was happening in marketing and maybe not so much in science, which opened up a fantastic opportunity. So let me cut to the chase. I asked that room that day, if they could wave a magic wand, what would the ideal active ingredient be for a sensitivity toothpaste? And they told me. And I got to work with Professor Heather Doucette at the Faculty of Dentistry on building a brand new active ingredient from the ground up. The ask was scary as hell. Here's what they wanted. Build a material that will target the source of pain, do it better than anything else that exists today. Make it degrade so that it's not gonna cause contamination in the environment and cause health issues for patients. And while you're at it, as it's degrading, let it release stuff that's going to trigger the body to unlock its own power of self-repair and regeneration so that we can treat the root cause of the disease. That's what the experts wanted. So with the help of an Corp, we built it right here. We built it right here. We built a completely unique technology that interacted with saliva to mineralize tooth 50 times faster than the next best thing the big companies can sell us. And then we wanted to see if it would actually treat sensitivity. So we gave it to the world's best test house. We asked them to blind test it against the very best products that these titans of the industry have. Guys, we wiped the floor, right? We absolutely wiped the floor with them. We, we call that particle Sense EIP. We had it, we knew we had to find a way to turn it into treatments for patients. 
So we ran the idea by some business folks, and we got a range of inputs. And many of them, you know, they didn't think we could do it again, and that's all right. They didn't think we could do it. They didn't think we could raise the money. We heard all the same stuff we heard at ABK. And a little bit like the ABK story, I kind of didn't care. We doubled down. We made a huge advance. We got positioning, director, or positioning support from all over the world. Directors of some of the biggest multinational companies in the pharma and life sciences space. We got experts in licensing from Europe, investment bankers from the UK, financiers in the US, regulators all across the world helping us when we put together that story. Today, since EIP was patented, assigned to a new company here in Halifax, and that company is called IR Scientific, and that is now a clinical stage company supported by major international partners that remain confidential, by major international experts, and by institutions that are getting ready to treat people around the world with that breakthrough technology. But with a focus on execution, a focus on global health challenges, we're back at it. On the fourth floor at the Faculty of Dentistry, we are building a pipeline of technologies to follow in the footsteps of some of the technologies I've spoken about tonight. And we're doing it with experts from all around the world. We're creating soluble technologies that can treat the source of knee osteoarthritis pain. That's a half a trillion dollar problem for Canada in the next 20 years. It's an enormous global healthcare challenge. We're building treatments for dental caries. Imagine, there's 521 million children under the age of 12 today that have dental caries and have zero treatment options. We are fixing that right now on the fourth floor at the Faculty of Dentistry. And I tell you, we will get it done, just like we did with everything else. And all of that is happening right here, right now. Patients in New Zealand getting 21st century breakthroughs in cancer care. Foreign direct investment into our region that is huge. Development for oral care solutions, cancer care solutions, knee osteoarthritis, bone regeneration. We are doing it all here and honestly, I feel like I'm just waking up from a stretch because we are only getting started. <laughs> so in closing, I want to say this. When it comes to globally impactful health research, Nova Scotia can do it. Nova Scotia is doing it. Nova Scotia does have global impact when it comes to breakthroughs in global healthcare. Nova Scotia can and does attract masses of foreign direct investment. Nova Scotia does and can attract the best talent from around this world. And could we do better? Of course we could. But whether you believe me or not, I'll be honest, I don't really care because we're just getting started, and I freaking love it when people tell me it can't be done. <laughs>